Hi everybody. So this video is to show you all, all the resources that are available to you in my lab, which you're going to be spending quite a lot of time in. Um, I've stayed in the account that I created fraudulently for my dog for demonstration purposes. Uh, as you can see, there's that pink label there that tells me my free access expires in 14 days. Not to worry, she won't need it after that. So let's just click on the course and be on about our merry way. There's two areas here that you're going to be most concerned about. The first one is course materials, right here. And the second one is grades. Now, I will, on a weekly basis, move your grades from my lab over into Canvas so that you can see all of your grades in one place. But, you know, it's nice to know that you can check here in my lab and, you know, see which things you've done and which things you haven't if you're in any doubt. Um, you can look at the individual applications and see which of those things you've done and which you haven't. But in the grade section, you can see it all at once. So that's kind of nice. Uh, but most of your time is going to be spent under course materials. So let's go there. In course materials, we see again course materials. Okay, well, let's see what's there. Oh, it's your textbook. Yay. Always nice to take a look at the textbook. We're going to come back to that and take a look at that in a minute. But first, let's also look and see that there are textbook PowerPoints. Ah, there's one for every chapter. So you can use those to get a quick overview of what's covered in the chapter before you dig in and read it. Um, you can use them as a study tool uh, as, you, as you're studying for the final to remind you of all the salient points in the chapter. Um, I would suggest that you use the actual chapter itself when you're doing the chapter quizzes because, you know, why use a PowerPoint that may not cover the exact thing that's in the question when you can use the book and actually search for the answer. But, you know, these are useful tools, so use them. Let's go back to the main course materials. You'll also see that there's a folder for every application that you're going to need to work in and do simulations in. Uh, Windows 10, PowerPoint, Word, Excel, Access, and we will do them in that order. Uh, there's also a folder for exams. This is where you'll find your um, uh, lab exams that need to be done in the actual software. They're not a simulation, but your instructions are there and your files that you'll need, and then you'll upload your results back there. We'll look at that in a minute. Um, and also your final exam will be there. Um, let's take a look at the one for Windows 10. This is the, you know, basically just an intro to how everything works in Windows. You'll see, uh, you know, there it is. Uh, nobody's done it yet. Uh, you can see when it's scheduled for and when it disappears. So, you know, you have to have it done by September 4th. Uh, it's actually due on the 21st, uh, so uh, if you turn it in after that, but before September 4th, then, you know, little bits of your grade will start to drop off. You can still get at least a C as long as you get it in before it disappears. But let's just take a look at how these things work. So it's going to open up in its own window, which means you need to have pop-ups not blocked. So turn off that pop-up blocker. Also, of course, let me mention, and I'll probably mention this when we see each other the first week of class, you need to be using a compatible browser. Chrome and Firefox are the best. Safari is not great. Um, Explorer, if you've still got an ancient copy of that, eh, no. Um, the new one, Edge, might be okay. But uh, Chrome and Firefox, those are the best. So I strongly suggest that you use those. So what we have here is a simulated desktop. That's the main window here. Over on the side, or perhaps on the bottom, depending on how your screen is configured, you're going to see the control panel with the instructions that you're going to follow. Now, some of the tasks that you have to do have multiple instructions. So whichever one that you're working on at the moment will appear in bold. Ones that you've already done or ones that you haven't will appear dimmed out. But I mean, you can still read them. 
Uh, you'll also see a navigation pane, so you can navigate among the tasks. You don't have to do them in order. Um, you also have a save button, so if you don't have time to finish the thing, you can save it and come back to it. When you've done all the tasks, it will automatically take you to submit, but if you're just going to throw up your hands in despair and submit without finishing everything, you can. I don't recommend that, but you can. Um, anyway, you can reset a question if you want to. You can view all of the tasks. Notice that all of them say not attempted, but you can go directly to a particular task and launch it via this window. Um, and of course, you can also go through each of the tasks. Um, you have three tries at each task. That should be enough, but I've turned on training mode so that if you don't get it, um, it will reset itself. So let's see what we've got here. It says sign into Windows using the Microsoft account for my IT lab user. So uh, there's our username. The password is, oh wow, how original. My IT lab one, two, three, four is the password. You can tell it to show the password briefly that way. And then click on the arrow. Welcome. Hey, you've completed that task. Yeah. Don't save the password. Um, not sure why that kicked in there. Display the home page of the settings window. Okay, so that would be under Windows settings. Where are they hiding settings here? There we go. Settings. All right, I got that. It says change the desktop background to the picture butterfly. Hmm. Okay, maybe I have no idea how to do that. I'm going to go down here to learning aids and have it show me how to do it. So it's going to open a little video. On the taskbar in the notifications area, click the action center icon and then click All Settings. Okay. In the Settings window, click Personalization. Below Choose Your Picture, click Browse. In the Open dialog box, click Butterfly.jpg. Click Choose Picture. In the Settings window, in the left pane, click Lock Screen. Below Choose Your Picture, click Browse. In the Open dialog box, Click Bahamas.jpg. Click Choose Picture. In the Settings window, click the Close button. Okay, so it's just showed me how to do it. So now I have to do it. All right, so I'm going to go to Personalization, Desktop Background, Browse, Butterfly. Choose picture, okay. lock screen, browse, Bahamas, choose picture, close the settings window. Cool, I did another one. Next thing, use the search box on the task, or using the search box on the taskbar, search for the image file named shark.jpg and open it from the results. Okay, once again, let's assume I have no idea how to do this. I mean, I do, but uh, we'll assume I have no idea how to do this because I want you to show, see the other way that you can get the simulation to help you. Again, we're going to learning aids. This time we're going to choose practice and it's going to walk Look us through step by step. Taskbar and type shark.jpg from the results Click shark.jpg. Okay, so now I've got to do that. I've clicked in the bar and shark.jpg. Press enter from the results. There's my shark.jpg. Okay, now I'm going to hit save because, you know, I'm done with demonstrating stuff. And now we see it's in progress. So when I have the time to sit down and finish that, 
I simply click on it again and it will pick up wherever I left off and I can go on and finish the simulation. When you've finished it and submitted it, then your score will appear here, uh, your total time will appear here, your attempts will appear here. Um, so that's how you work your way through the simulations. Now let's go back to my course and take a look at your textbook. Course materials, e-textbook. Again, this is going to pop up, well, once you find it, uh, technology in action is the one you want. This one is actually a text, the one that says exploring Microsoft Office. As you might expect, that's a text on Microsoft Office. So if you want to read about Microsoft Office before you attempt the simulations, you are welcome to do so. You are not required to do so. But let's go to the actual textbook here. Technology in action. Again, opens up in a pop-up window, so make sure your pop-ups are not blocked. Why am I getting an error message? Oh no. There we go. Sometimes poor pop-ups, huh? All right, let me maximize this so you can see it. This is your textbook. Um, little hints if you haven't been in it before. See your table of contents, textbook navigation, search, always useful when you're trying to find the answers for the quizzes, which by the way are teaching exercises, not tests. So yeah, it's perfectly okay to use the textbook and use the search feature. Uh, notebook of anything that you've highlighted or attached notes to. Uh, study tools, you can create flashcards. And text settings, you can adjust the way the textbook looks. Oh, and you can listen to your e-textbook read aloud if you need to. Um, pretty nifty. This textbook has got some pretty good features. Let's just take a look at the display settings right off the bat. If you find this uncomfortable to look at, you can do the dark screen version or you can do the sepia version. I don't have a problem with this one, so I'll go with that. Table of contents. You can open up each chapter, see the bits and pieces, go directly to them. And read. There's your turn the page. If you need to highlight something, Oh, and you know, notice the terms defined. Very nice. You need to highlight something, just highlight it. You can choose a color, you can add a note, you can put it on a flashcard, you can search for that thing, see where it shows up in other places, whatever you want to do. If you decide not to highlight it, just click out of it. It's very, very simple to use. So I hope that you'll find the textbook a useful tool. Now, if you are absolutely set on having a print version of the textbook, then you can order an upgrade. What you do not get is the full bound textbook. What you get is a three hole punched set of pages that you can put into a binder and you have to provide the binder. Last time I looked, it cost 25 bucks. I don't know why anybody would spend that extra money, but you know, if you just really like to have a, a physical textbook that you can sit in your easy chair and read, be my guest. Um, yeah, it's entirely up to you. Now, this was just a very brief introduction to what's in my lab. If you have questions, don't hesitate to get in contact with me, show up for office hours, message me, uh, message me to ask for an appointment to talk about things, whatever it is you need, I'm here for you. So uh, I hope you found this useful and I will see you in further videos. Good morning, I guess you comment.